From the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., this is Rewind. This week, the parents of a Florida A&M University drum major beaten to death in November announced the formation of a foundation to promote anti-hazing programs on university campuses. Robert D. Champion is my son, and we have a foundation, the Robert D. Champion Drum Major for Change, and that foundation is about what we are here for today. And that is to rid the colleges, the schools, of the violence, the brutality of hazing, to say no more, no more. In the broadcast studios, religion and ethics discussed the ethics of U.S. Marines seen in an online video urinating on dead Taliban fighters. There's this thought, if you, if you can't get at this invisible en enemy while they're living, then at least you can do something to them when they're dead. That said, it's really the role of a commander in especially these small units to set the command tone and to keep these impulses in check. On the cusp of the 39th anniversary of Roe v. Wade, a longtime abortion activist says that as the economy worsens, more women will attempt to prevent pregnancy. The birth rates are falling, the demands for birth control and vasectomies are rising, and is it not surprising that the rate of abortions, particularly among poor women, are rising? Three quarters of American women, 73%, are making a decision to have an abortion because of economic reasons. She says the future is dim for abortion rights if any current GOP candidate lands in the Oval Office. I think they're jumping over themselves uh, like kangaroos to show who is more anti-choice than the previous one. It's extraordinary. Each and every single candidate has specified unequivocally that they would overturn Roe v. Wade. A report released this week states homelessness is down 1% in the last two years, but one congresswoman says it is just the beginning of another year of people sinking deeper and deeper into poverty. We have got to change the conversation uh, around the social contract uh, that we have in this country. You know, you're not on welfare if you need Medicaid. If you're an 86-year-old white woman uh, in a nursing home and had the audacity to live beyond your husband's assets, how dare you live too long and now need Medicaid? We've got to change the conversation. At the general membership meeting, outgoing President Mark Hamrick closed his year in office and handed the gavel to the new president. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. So, I'm smiling as I hand the gavel over to my remarkably capable successor. She's going to do a great job as the 105th president of the press club. From the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., this has been Rewind. I'm Steve Taylor.